Only in fairy tales could a numbskull be a hero. Bearing an unprepossessing name is nearly a requirement. It's guaranteed that something good will happen to him, no matter how unlikely or undeserved. The Golden Goose is appalling proof. Father sends his three sons to chop wood, perhaps believing that idle hands do the devil's work. Take provisions, children. God forbid you should suffer a moment's hunger or thirst. Smarty Pants should have a pancake, mother, with a flask of good wine. Let Best Boy have the same. Dimwit can take that crust of moldy bread and a bottle of sour As soon beer. as they enter the woods, the would-be lumberjacks encounter a peculiar old man. Please, sir, offer me a piece of your pancake and a drink from your flask. I'm hungry in part. I think not, old one. If I shared with you, I'd have less for myself. You young gentleman, might I have a morsel of your cake and a sip of your wine? I'm starving. Oh no, old one. If I shared with you, I couldn't share with someone worthier. Then you, boy, will you share your food and drink with me? Gladly, sir, though you may be accustomed to better. Half of what I have is yours. Bad character bears bad luck. <laughs> you have a good heart. If you cut down that old tree, you'll find something good at the roots. <laughs> something good? Maybe there's a goose with feathers of pure gold sitting in the roots. Dimwit gathers it up and walks to the nearest town. Curious girls whose greed conquers their discretion try to steal some gold and feathers. The moment they touch anything that has touched the goose, they're held fast and dragged behind Dimwit like a lumpy tail. Keep away, for goodness sake, keep away! This is not like glittering precious gold. It's more like horse glue. Stay back! Save the advice, you selfish chill. Why should you have all that gold? I want my share. And she gets her share of deserved ridicule. But there's more fun to come. A nosy parson's sense of decency is outraged by the bizarre procession. For shame, you good-for-nothing hussy. Why are you running after this young man? Come away. Aye, your reverence, don't forget we have a christening today. What a fiasco! But hilarious! Everyone who witnesses these fools tripping behind Dimwit and cursing their own stupidity is in stitches! Gotta love that! And the king's daughter does! Father, that man made me laugh. I want to marry him. Him? He's several stops below your station. If you want me to be happy, arrange it. All right. But he must prove himself worthy. Boy, come close if you want to be my heir. The king's not happy that his only daughter has fallen for a doubt with a retinue of morons. After a moment's thought, he sets three tasks. First, find a man who can drink an entire cellar full of wine. Then, find a man who can eat a mountain of bread. Finally, uh, bring me a ship that can sail on land and water. Shouldn't be too difficult. Happy to try, your majesty. I'm off to find a thirsty man. He doesn't know where to find a world-class boozer, so he returns to the forest where he found the goose. There, he meets a man who says his thirst can't be quenched. Imagine that. And takes him back to the castle. Water makes me sick, you see. Dirty stuff. Fish frolic in it. Only wine, lots of it, can slake my thirst. Luckily, I learned to dog paddle. Happy I could help you out. Not as happy as I am. <laughs> Confident that a wine will be imbibed, Dimwit sets off to find the consumer of a mountain of bread. Naturally, he returns to the spot of his previous success. And once again, like a royal mountie on a roll, he gets his man. Mount Bread's a fine place for hungry fellas. Indeed. <laughs> the hills and the valleys of bread I've consumed might as well be a cocktail, Winnie. <laughs>
If I'm not to die of hunger, I must eat more. <laughs> Mind the dogs. Who knows what they've eaten might cause indigestion. <laughs> I've a very strong stomach. <laughs> All gluttons must now. Finally, the ship that sails on sea and land must be secured. And Dimwit returns to the well. And the little old man with whom he shared his food provides the unique ship. Here comes a wedding. You passed all the tests. Welcome to the family, I guess. My pleasure, Your Majesty. Though not as much fun as I'll have tonight. War. We'll <laughs> see about that. Can't be funnier than a sticky goose. The inevitable wedding causes inevitable illness. After the king's death, which couldn't come too soon in my view, Dimwit inherited the kingdom and lived contentedly with his wife. Oh boy. Made for each other, I'd say. Over the top, isn't it? Dimwit's generosity might be commended, but not so handsomely rewarded. The king's tests are seriously odd and dopey. Does the princess really want him for a laugh? Where's the goose, by the way? And shouldn't he change his name? Think of his children. Oh no, I wouldn't stomach it. I'd play on. Won't you? Father sends his sons to chop down trees. Why? I'm serious. The weather's fair. The cottage is in good condition. He's not in the lumber business. Why? Looks like mindless punishing make work. His son should show him what they think of his program. Make it foul. Muddy it up. in a brothel, and about as useful. Thank you. 